Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to build a transfer magnet. Basically, if you've ever seen a movie and you saw that giant crane and it came down and it picked up a car and it dropped it into a compactor and it crushed it up, that giant crane and that magnet is basically a transfer magnet. At a very extreme level, it's an electromagnet. Well, we're going to build something that you can use around the house and it does have a lot of uses as you'll see at the end when we start to test it out, okay? Now these magnets are from a hard drive, okay? Um, a recycler removed the disks, they had to destroy the disks and they, they gave me the magnets, so these didn't cost me anything. Um, but if you don't have something like this, access to this, you could very easily go on Amazon and you could buy some magnets. Um, I forget the name, Neo something or another, magnets are very, very, very powerful. So I'm going to give you a few warnings, okay? These magnets will hurt you, all right? Um, I'm going to remove them, and then I'm going to show you how powerful these are. So we'll take a quick pause. I'll get these out of here, and we'll be back. We're ready to take the magnets out of here. This is the easiest way i found to do it. Okay, you're going to need a putty knife, a very stiff putty knife. A vise if you have it, okay? Place these into the vise. Get yourself a little hammer. Place it right into the corner and just tap. When you hear it pop off, you're good on that one side. Then we'll come over to this side. Now there it is. Now again, I told you how powerful these magnets are. It's going to be hard to get out of here. We'll push them out. Ah, we got them out. Now, unless you were Superman, you can't pull these apart. But if you twist them, okay, then you can grab one side and the other and you can pull them apart. Again, be very, very careful. I saw somebody get two of these stuck on the inside of their hand and when they pulled them off, they actually pulled a piece of skin off. So again, I, I can't emphasize a mu uh, too much how powerful these magnets are. So we'll get set back up on our uh, setup table and we'll continue on with the project. We're back. I have two of these magnets. Again, please be very, very careful with powerful magnets. Um, if you can see, I'm holding them. They're close and they'll touch. Okay, but I'm not letting these go. Because if I let this go, they will just snap together. And like I was saying, they'll, they'll pinch your skin. Just to give you an idea on how powerful they are. That's going right through my hand. Okay. Here's a big chunk of wood. That's uh, an inch and three quarters thick. Okay, they are extremely powerful. I can't emphasize enough. Please be careful with them, okay? So once you have your, your magnets removed, you can put them on the side. We're not going to need them at the moment. You're going to need to get yourself some type of container this is just a fiber supplement okay and you're going to want to cut it to approximately i'd say about maybe four inches long okay give you a little tip on how you can measure that you get yourself a little block or some type of other container that's the height that you want okay Get yourself a Sharpie, place it on top, and just go all the way around, okay? You'll get a nice straight line, oh, straight enough to make the cut. Then what you're going to do is, you get yourself a sheetrock knife, okay? Now, don't stick the blade out too far. Again, be very, very careful. Um, you really should be wearing gloves if you do this. 
um, and then you score and cut all the way around your container, okay? And then we'll end up with something exactly like that. So that's the height we're going to make it. Next, we're going to need a can. And the can needs to fit inside there, okay? It doesn't have to fit exactly, but you want it to get it as close as you can to the dimensions on the bottom of the plastic container you're going to use. So this one fits pretty good. Now, the next step is a little tricky. You're going to get yourself a can opener. Okay, one of these type with the little wheel on it. And you're going to start going around it like this. And just press in. You might be tempted to just try to turn it, but it, it goes off at a weird angle. Okay, And you want to do this on the side. You don't want to do this on the top. Because you want this rim to stay attached. Okay. Again, you should probably wear gloves when you're doing this. You end up with some sharp pieces. Take your time. And that's what you end up with. I did that to the top and the bottom, okay? Next thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a nice piece of flat wood. Just go around. And what that does is it flattens it out, gets rid of all the, the little sharp edges. Okay. Do that to both pieces. And we'll set them aside for now. Next, you're going to want to get yourself two pieces of plywood. And you're going to want them to be, when they're together, at least an inch, right? So you got about an inch here. You're going to want to take the object and you're going to want to draw a circle around it. Now, if you hold this down, it's kind of flexible. You, you can't get a really super accurate um, circle. If you happen to have some kind of lid that fits right in there, you can use that to lay down. But the best way to do it is measure it across. Make sure you have a good accurate measurement. Get yourself a pair of a compass, okay? Put it in the center and draw the circle all the way around so you know you have a good accurate circle then you want to get yourself some wood glue okay if you watched my other videos i love the gorilla glue place this down on here smear it around you'll feel it almost stop okay at this point we're going to get a couple breads these are three quarter breads okay so we're going to let this glue set up for about uh, around a half hour and then um, we'll be back and I'll show you the next steps.
we're back. So the glue is set up, and now it's time to cut this circle out of this two pieces of plywood. Okay, my preferred method is to use a scroll saw. Um, if you don't have a scroll saw, you can use a handheld coping saw, or you can use electric jigsaw. But if you do have access to a scroll saw or a band saw, uh, that's the way to go. So, when you cut it, try to stay just outside the line, okay? Oh, before I forget, safety glasses and a dust mask wouldn't hurt either. There you have it. So let me get up, set up the next portion of this, and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, we're at my belt sanding station. If you don't have one of these, you could definitely do this by hand with sandpaper and a file, okay? But this makes it way, way easier, okay? So what I'm gonna do first is, we have our little mark in the middle for our center, right? I'm going to flip over to our drill press. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to drill a hole right on that center mark. Okay, so now we have that hole. Let's get this back over to here. Okay, now we're gonna set up a little jig. All right, so what you're gonna need is a little nail that fits in that hole, okay? Get yourself a little piece of wood like this. You got your wood that the nail fits in. And you're going to just tap that nail in, leaving it hanging over the edge. So now that spins around, okay? Now we're gonna take this, we're gonna get ourselves a little clamp. And we're gonna clamp this piece of wood to our little sanding table here. Not too tight, because we're gonna to wanna to move this in. Now you're gonna to wanna to stay on this side because it rotates this direction. If you did it on this side, it's gonna throw it up into the air, okay? so. You're gonna to wanna to be able to move it in. Slide this over even a little bit more. Get your clamp, 
where it has just a little bit of resistance where you could actually move this. And we're gonna start sanding to the line. It looks like I'll be able to get that in. I'll bring you over to the uh, setup station and I'll show you the next steps. So we have our piece right here. Fits in beautifully. Next step is up to this point, I haven't spent any money on this. This has been all stuff I had laying around the house. Okay. Um, I did have to purchase this. This is um, a threaded rod. Sometimes they call it all rod. Um, all thread okay this is at 832 it's um, three feet long we're not going to need all of that so the next step to do is we're going to get some heat shrink if you don't know what heat shrink is basically you would put these on wires and then you apply some heat with either a, a lighter I'll show you what it does so you can see it starts to shrink okay it makes a nice seal um, or you could use a heat gun if you have a heat gun so we just snipped a little piece off stuck it on the end of our rod because that's the size of the hole we're going to want to drill through here okay so I made a couple test holes just a scrap piece of wood till I got exactly what I wanted you want it to be fairly loose going through okay And we're going to drill that hole. Now, since there's a hole already started, it's going to go through easy. Um, if there wasn't, I would do this in the drill press. There's a hole. Let's make sure our rod goes through. That's good. Now when we shrink this, it'll be a little tighter and make it a little looser. Okay. Now the next step, we have our top and bottom of our cans. Okay, we're going to find the center point. So basically, kind of eyeball, draw a line, eyeball, draw a line. And then what you could do is, you could make a little mark. Hopefully you can see that little black mark there. And then double check yourself. Go around a little bit. Make sure that that lines up. Okay. It should be pretty centered. If it's, if it's off a, a hair, that's fine. Okay. And then you're going to make yourself a little hole with a punch. Okay. And you want this only to as big, be as big as it takes to get this rod through. So go slow. Be a little bigger.
you want it to be nice and tight. So it actually will end up screwing on. So we're good. Take that off. Get the other one right on it. Go through the other one. bigger this one could be bigger because this one's going to be the top so all right we're good on that so we got our two holes in here we made our hole in here we'll set them aside now the next step is going to take place over at the vise so I'll take a pause and bring you over there all right we're at the vise we have our all thread. What we're going to do is we're going to take a couple nuts, screw them on there, we're going to place this into the vise. Make it nice and tight. And you're going to get yourself a little washer. Okay. These happen to be number six. I believe it was about a dollar sixty or something. Okay. Now you're going to want to place that washer. Ooh, I lost it. Over the top. And the idea is we're going to want to peen this end. And what I mean by that is, this is a ball peen hammer. The round side is what peens it, okay? When you hit metal with the round side, it, it tends to mushroom it over, okay? And that's what we're gonna wanna do on this. do that until the washer doesn't come off and as you can see it doesn't so we're done with that step let me set up the next step and uh, we'll continue on all right so we have our washer on the end peened over now we're going to take we'll take this one here and we want to make sure that the flattest side is at the bottom so we're going to place this in here. Next, we're going to get ourselves one of the nuts. that snugged up just help a little pliers okay so we got that nice and tight next we're going to take the magnets again be careful them right in the middle then we'll take our second one it doesn't matter which side you heard that force okay so now you have a little sandwich there and the reason why we put the second one is because they tend to want to they want to jump together okay so we don't want them to if you drop this we don't want them to flip up Okay, we want them to stay flat. So get our second nut. And I want 
want to snug that up. Okay. Now, if you notice, I cut the rod. Um, it was a three feet, three foot piece of rod, and put those screws on. That would have been crazy. So I trimmed it up just to give you an idea how much you could trim it. Um, you want to have about four inches or so sticking out when this is on the bottom. So you, it's a little easier to work with. Okay. So at this point, we're not going to be screwing anything else down the length of this rod. So we could tighten this nut by holding it down here. Get yourself a little wrench if you can even do it because I'm telling you these things are so strong. This thing just wants to stick to the wrench. Okay, we'll call that good. All right, next step, we're going to place this in here. We could get our top to place this on here. Probably going to fall in, but it'll keep it centered. All right, and we're going to want to make a handle. Now, I made this out of a piece of wire very very stiff wire um, if you don't have the wire or if you're not able to do the next step that I'm going to show you you could drill a couple holes here and you can use a dowel stick a wooden dowel in there and then have a cross piece across the top and the dowel going in like this and that will be your handle but I'm going to show you how to do it out of metal like this okay and then on the metal we have this heat shrink okay we're also going to put this heat shrink on here okay so we'll go back into the garage and uh, i'll show you how to bend up a handle like that okay we're at our vise um just a tip the longer the piece of wire is the easier it is to straighten out Okay, so you want to try to get it as straight as you can. When you start getting to the end like this, you could put that in the vise and straighten it. Or if you have a, a little anvil like I have here, you could place it down on the anvil and hit it. Roll it around. You can get a pretty straight piece out of that, okay? So now you're going to want the legs to be four inches so we'll say okay we measured four inches put it in the vise and bend it okay now again you could straighten all of that out putting it over you get a pretty decent corner 90 degree corner pretty easily okay now the next thing you're going to want to do is Have your sample container, okay, and you're going to want to make the other leg bend down so that it lines up. So we'll go for right there. And bend that. Okay, so you'll end up with a U. Now you're going to want to cut this off to the same length. Now you can use a hacksaw um, if you happen to have one of these bolt cutters. They work great, you know. Um, get it in there. Snap it. Right. Okay. So once you have these both the same length and you know you're good, that fits on the side of the container. All right, you're gonna get yourself the shrink wrap and you're gonna start to work it up. Okay, just work it up, pull it up, pull it up. I'll show you with this piece here, basically how you would do it. Okay, start to bend it around, push it up on one side. Hopefully you can see that. And you'll get it all the way around, okay? Leave about 
you'll see on this one, leave about an inch down at the bottom, okay? Because we're going to make a flat spot and we're going to drill a couple holes. So let me see if I could get this a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to place the end of this. You're going to need some type of you know anvil or a vice to do this um, and again if you can't do that you could do like I said before get some dowels and drill some holes and basically make this shape right with the dowels so this would be a dowel going into the into that round disc this would be a dowel and then you could put a flat piece you know uh, some type of flat piece on the top drill a hole here drill a hole here put the dowel in glue it all together and you'd have a handle but again, yeah, this is much more sturdy and professional so you're gonna get yourself some type of hammer that has a flat bottom and you're just gonna hit this Hopefully that shows up. So you flatten that out, okay? Next, you get yourself some type of punch. You're gonna do that on both sides, okay? And then you're going to get a punch and you're gonna send a punch, a couple holes. Let me get this on here. Let me back out a bit. You're going to get yourself a little center hole, okay, and then you're going to get a drill bit, and you're going to drill that out, all right, and you're going to do two, two of them on each side. All right, back over to the setup table. So the next step is going to be, we're going to place this inside of here, okay, we can put this in too. We're going to push it all the way down to the bottom, okay? Next, we're going to get our handle. We're going to place that on there. We'll get an idea of where we want to cut this. Okay, now we're going to want this to be pulled up. And I can see the shadow in there. I'm not so sure if you can see the shadow. There it is, there it is, there it is. You want to probably go, I would say, at least... An inch and a half off the bottom. So you get yourself a little sharpie and make a mark about an inch down from this top right here. Okay. Take a handle off. We're gonna take this off. Now, where's our sharpie mark? There it is. We'll make it a little darker. Okay. So. When you're cutting rod like this, you're going to want to make sure that you have a nut down below where you're going to cut. There's our cut line. Now you could use... Um, whatever you have if you have a hacksaw a dremel tool um cut off wheel and then the idea to have the the nut down here is so that when you take the nut back up it'll redress those threads but if you happen to have one of these this actually has cutoffs in them so we're going to go to the 832 we're going to screw it in from the back Before I commit to cutting it, I'm going to just double check myself to make sure that I got this where I want it, okay?
So I'm going to have to reach my hands in here. I'm going to be grabbing this little piece of dowel that I made. All right. This is going to end up on here. And that's going to be my handle to pull up. So I want to look. All right, so I'm going to say that that might be just a little too short. So I'm going to back this out. I'm going to place that back in there again. Place my handle on it. Oh, actually we were pretty good. We'll go back in. Alright, so I'm at my original mark. Let's see how that looks again. It's always good with that, that rule, uh, measure twice, cut once. Okay, so this will be right around here. And when we pull it out, we're good. It goes right up to the top. Alright, I'm good with that. So we're going to make our cut. You just squeeze it. And screw it off of there. The nut should come off. Might be a little, a little tough. Okay, yep. got a little burr on that. Okay, so if you have a burr, you can get yourself a file. Knock the burr off. Boy, everything wants to stick to this. Hopefully it'll come off now. Oh boy, that wants to stick on there. All right. We're going to have to use a wrench. We can hold this. Like I said, now we're not going to be screwing anything else down in here. Okay, so we could hold this and it wouldn't matter if we uh, damage the threads at that point over there. Okay, we just want to get this nut off. Okay, so now we're going to take our heat shrink, we'll see how high we need it, where's our little handle, put our handle on, the handle's going to go about there. Right about there. I'll refurbish scissors from our video yesterday. Cut out heat shrink. I'll handle off. Place this on here. Okay. Now we're going to put our block on. Make sure. It moves up and down nice and freely. We're going to put a nut on this. That's catching on those threads. Move this down a little bit. They get damaged easily, these threads. Get that on there. Put a little handle on top. Let's 
snug them up. Okay? You can push your heat shrink up as far as it goes. And we're going to add a little heat to this and let it shrink down. Don't worry if it gets a little um, lamp black, basically, they call it. Well, like I said, if you had a heat gun. Doesn't take long. All right, we're getting near the finish line. So next thing we're going to want to do is place this in here. Um, actually, need a couple little nails. Let me grab them. I'll be right back. So I'm back with the nails. Um, make sure to have a little head on them. Okay, we're going to make a little indentation in the plastic. Make sure that the top is flush. Put your nail in it. And then go right over to the other side and put another one in. So now that's nice and secure. So this should move pretty freely in there. Okay? So next step is we're going to get our handles and we're going to put it opposite. Of where the nails are. Make yourself a little starter hole. I got four little sheet metal screws. So basically, that's done. And the way it works is you put your, your palm here and you grab this. Okay? Now when it's fully down, this is how it picks things up. Okay? I'll, I'll readjust the camera to show you the side angle and then you'll see how she works. We'll be right back. Alright. So here we are. We have it finished. All screwed in, nailed in, and I'm going to give you a demonstration. So the way it works is, you have all of these screws laying all around. Get your little container, pull up on this handle, boom. Transfer magnet. But just to give you an idea, You can see that three pound barbell. That's a lot of weight. But wait, there's more. Would you believe a five pound barbell? Look at that. Now that's a transfer magnet. Transfer it to there, we transfer it over there, we transfer it over there. Okay, then you just grab your little handle right here, lift up, and off it goes. And like I said, the, these magnets are just, they're awesome. I mean, you could carry this around, it's not going to fall off. So, 
there you go. That's how I do stuff. Today's episode was the transfer magnet. If you like what you see and you enjoyed the video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe to my channel. And if there's anything that you'd like me to make for you or show you how to do, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get it out for you. Thanks for watching.